Today's video is sponsored by CryptoCaverns.com. I had the pleasure of visiting Crypto Caverns mining farm and facility back in October. Rows and rows of hosted GPU mining rigs and customer ASICs line their impressive facility. Located in upstate New York along a river and hydroelectric dam. The team at Crypto Caverns is now offering the public the ability to purchase GPUs and ASICs directly from their website with no minimum quantity required. I just picked up five Galax RTX 3070s from Crypto Caverns, and I'm considering nabbing three more to fill a full eight GPU mining rig. Concerned on quality? No worries. Crypto Caverns has a full 30 day money back guarantee return policy, as well as volume discounting and free domestic shipping in the United States. Use checkout code hobbyist for $100 off any ASIC purchase. Thanks again to CryptoCaverns.com for supporting the Hobbyist Miner community. What's going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well, today is going to be another shed update video. If you guys aren't familiar and you're just stumbling across my channel, I'm in the process of building my second crypto mining shed. And it's been quite a journey uh, starting out in my home basement. We started out with just an unfinished basement with a few mining rigs. We moved on to a grow tent setup. We outgrew the grow tent. We decided to try to build this crypto mining room in my basement. Total disaster. I'll leave a link to that video down below if you guys are interested. Uh, just finished up talking about that and gutting that room a little bit more. Uh, so check that out definitely if you're interested. Uh, and then we moved on to building the crypto mining shed at my house. That's number one, and that's worked out awesome. It's been a learning process. I think the biggest indicator with that crypto mining shed was intake, intake, intake. Not necessarily active intake, but lots of passive intake, lots of air for the exhaust fans to pull from. I've been chatting with a lot of people over the last few weeks, and there's this weird commonality that I'm starting to run into. So if this is one of you guys, quick heads up. I'm finding more and more people I'm talking to that are struggling with overheating issues in their basements or their garages and stuff. They're just pulling air from their house. They have no intake dedicated to mining. They're just like, oh, I'm just going to pull the air from my house. I'm like, but how are you replacing that air in your house? Well, they're not. And that's some of the biggest challenges that people are running into. And it took me a while to learn from it. Even with my crypto mining shed, the first one I built, I didn't have enough intake, enough passive intake, you'd be surprised how much actual air availability you need, especially if you're just exhausting air. Um, so anyways, moved on from there. We're now on to shed number two. We've outgrown that shed. We're going to keep that shed with uh, GPU mining. We're going to be moving all of our ASIC miners over here to shed number two. So Hopefully you guys have enjoyed a little bit of two minutes of story time to where we got here today. We're actually at my electrician's house. He lives about five minutes down the road from me. And uh, we have been renovating his older shed. It's about 10, 15 years old. It's a 12 by 12 shed. It's all uh, vinyl, actually. So we've been making some alterations to make it kind of this hybrid shed um, because we do need more structural support for some of these walls for our gable intake vents and for our large exhaust fans. Well, let's walk out to the shed and I'll show you guys the update as well as what we have next coming down the pipeline and our timetable. All right, guys. So here we are at our crypto mining shed number two, our latest project here, calling it our, our farm <laughs> with our chickens and roosters and all that over there. So. This is the shed currently. I think this is the fourth video I've done. If you guys wanna see the progress, I'll leave links to the original first three videos down below if you guys are interested in kind of following along on the project itself. So an older shed, as you guys can see, it's more of an A-frame shed uh, and it is a vinyl shed and we've actually made quite significant changes to it. So in previous videos, you guys might've seen this wall here used to be all vinyl just like that what you guys see there that wasn't really going to work for us we needed to go ahead and get it to be structurally sound as well as something to mount our gable vents to so with this in mind you guys can see we actually replaced this wall with plywood now there were some things that we wish we would have done differently but what we ended up doing is we ended up actually putting in this flex seal tape 
where all the seams are for that plywood. So that's actually why you see this kind of tape here. Um, it's actually meant for exactly what we used it for there. <clears throat> and I just finished up uh, yesterday actually doing a primer on top of this so that it can be painted. Uh, Mr. Electrician is gonna go ahead and kind of paint it closer to this color here that you can see. It's not gonna be perfect, but it'll be better uh, before we go ahead and install our gable vents. We're gonna be doing 14 total gable vents across here. I'll show a quick update. You guys can see what that is. Now, it's not perfect. This isn't my craft or my trade. We did end up going ahead and running a bead of clear silicone down the side here to help with that seam, but our plywood does go into about here tucked behind as well as tucked behind up there. So we did a really good job with that uh, and it should seal up pretty good. This is just part of the wood here that you guys can see. So this is our intake side. If we flip over on this side, you can actually see this is just the vinyl. We have a window there. Now on this side, we did the exact same thing. Exact same setup. This is gonna be where our exhaust is gonna be. So we're gonna have four AC Infinity T14 shutter fans here. No way we're gonna run all of them at once, but we will be running all of those here that you guys will see. Um, and that's the same setup on this side, should run really well. It's all gonna exhaust out this side and we're actually gonna do some duct work down the road, not right away, to duct about an eight inch duct work into this little hen house here to provide these chickens and birds and stuff some heat during the winter. So that should turn out pretty, pretty good. As you guys can see, our roof's in pretty dang good shape here, which is nice, that was one of my concerns. But let's go ahead and walk around and show you what we've been up to inside. Intake vents, by the way, we're gonna pick up uh, this weekend. I'm actually picking them up from uh, Rusky, who is a fellow YouTuber and content creator. He lives an hour and a half, I think, from me, give or take. Uh, and I'm gonna pick them up from him this weekend. So we're gonna do a video on his shed. He has a crypto mining shed. And we're gonna be picking up those gable vents from him because he is not using them currently at the moment. So let's go ahead here and take a look inside at our shed. So lots of progress here, where should we start? So I think I showed you guys the walls here. This is the back side of our intake wall. And uh, we finished that up. I did come through recently and do a bead of clear silicone just to help seal this up on this side to be safe and then check it out. I <laughs> love and hate this stuff. This is uh, the gaps and cracks filler. And man, you guys want to see, I went to town putting that anywhere and everywhere I could. I even went ahead, there was a, a vent up top here, capped it off. Uh, I actually had wood from my old shed. These are the intake vents, uh, the outside of the shed. Look, you can see there's the outside of the shed and then the inside actually has uh, the foil heat for the heat barrier. I had a bunch of that sitting around. So we capped off that vent we put some more of that gaps and cracks everywhere. I mean, I went to town with that, just sealing up everything I could. Um, this wall is not gonna have anything else on it except for our gable vents. That's gonna be installed here soon. We actually started to map it out. You might be able to see in the video, there's a pencil mark here. Top one's gonna go here. Bottom one's gonna go here, giving us a little bit of a gap at the bottom. We're not gonna involve the seam or anything else up top there, but you can actually see, you see how the plywood goes up into this trim? works out really nicely. So uh, other than that, you can see, look, here's all the vinyl left over. We have somebody coming to pick that up and trash it. I went to town on this wall here with sealing that up. Um, we are gonna be putting plywood against this wall. It's actually gonna cover this entire wall we're gonna do in plywood. So I decided to come in and just seal this up the best I can. It's not perfect. Um, can it hurt? I don't think so. Uh, but is it helpful? Probably. Uh, so I went to town filling that up. The plywood's gonna go here. Our power is gonna go here. Actually, this weekend, Mr. Electrician's gonna have time. He's gonna trench our power to here, and then we're gonna have our panel sitting right here on this wall, 150 amp panel. Uh, sealed up a little bit around the window here uh, that you guys can see. The rest of it goes all the way around. Here's our exhaust wall. So intake's gonna come in. There's gonna be our rack in the middle here, all across the middle and then it's gonna get sucked out that side. There's so much room in this shed though, it's crazy. So I went ahead, more of this gaps and cracks, silicone filler all through here, all through there, which worked out really, really nicely. We also did our silicone clear coat over here. So other items that we've worked on in the meantime uh, that I wanted to share with you guys is check out up top here. So these beams, these cross beams were in place. 
but they were lower. So I, I increased them up, I put some supports in place to support them, and I got some U-clamps up in here. So we're gonna be using these, and I got another one on this side, over here, you can see. We're gonna be using those as cable tracks. So we're going to have power over here, meter boxes over here for our 30 amp 240 volts. We're gonna have our wire go over and our PDUs are gonna sit on this wall. Have a whole wall of PDUs, they're gonna wire over to the meter boxes there. From the PDUs, we're gonna have C13, C14 cables go up, go through our U clamps and then drop down. Everything's gonna drop down from the ceiling into our rack. On this side, we're gonna do the opposite and do ethernet cable. So ethernet cable is gonna come through and we're gonna put our network switch over here to the wall um, and that'll pipe everything in and then down so that I'll be able to walk totally around. If you imagine a rack here, I'll be able to walk all the way around the rack, no problem, which should work out nicely. Um, other than that, I did work on the last thing which I had to get creative with. If you guys can see up in here, you see how it's kind of reflective? That's actually pieces of this wood. So there's a ridge vent. A lot of sheds that are A-frames have uh, ridge vents in order to release some of the heat. And actually when I got a ladder and went up there, I could feel cold air coming in. And what it is, is you go straight up and then you can go where you see that silver shininess, you can go to the left or right and it actually vents out. So I actually cut pieces of wood, got them propped in there nicely uh, in order to help seal up that ridge vent. And then I took more of my gaps and cracks stuff sealant and sealed that up. And now there, you can't feel any cool air up in there uh, and it's completely sealed off. Now the reason that I'm like, oh, let's seal everything, seal everything, seal everything is because I wanna control the airflow. And so I want air coming through our intake vents and going across the entire shed. I don't want air coming from a vent there and kind of going this way. I don't want air, because you gotta think, these big exhaust vents are just gonna suck air from anywhere and everywhere. I mean, it's gonna suck from the door frame. It's gonna suck it from up here. So I wanted to seal that the best I can. It's not perfect. That's the one challenge I'm running into looking at like converting some of these older sheds or vinyl sheds. They're not as airtight as like a full wood shed would be. But yeah, so there's our progress. Uh, coming up this weekend, Mr. Electrician said that he's going to be going ahead and doing our electrical panel right here. Once that's done, we're gonna rough in all of our electric through the whole thing. We're gonna be putting in some regular outlets uh, just in case we need them for anything. Should be a lot of fun. I'm hoping that we realistically, I wanted to start uh, having ASIC in here August 1st, but I think it's gonna be mid-August. We'll have to see. Well guys, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the update, give it one of these and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. The Meter Box and Octo Miner are teaming up for another exciting giveaway. Win the latest proof of useful work, Octo Server E10, and X8 Ultra Plus and more. Introducing the limited edition Octo Miner box set by Meter Box. It includes the 125 volt and 250 volt meter boxes, a special NFT, stickers, and a keychain. Hurry, only 250 box sets available. Visit themeterbox.com now to secure yours today. Purchase the Octo Miner box set and unlock a secret code for 1,000 entries. Plus, earn an extra 1,000 entries and receive that collectible NFT. Don't miss out. The contest ends July 30th.